In a win for labor, the Federal Trade Commission has proposed a ban on what is commonly referred to as non-compete clauses for employment, which prevent workers from leaving their job to start working at a rival business or taking a job with a competitor. Now, the use of these non-compete clauses has expanded in recent years and has been implemented in cases where it makes absolutely no sense. So if you're working, let's say for some sort of tech company where there is proprietary information that you could potentially take with you and use against the company for with a competitor that you're now working for, I think non-compete clauses might make sense. But when you're a fast food worker and a non-compete clause prevents you from working at, let's say, a different McDonald's that might pay you more, then obviously it doesn't make sense and intentionally prevents you from you know, increasing your wages and the money you could earn. Now, the FTC announced the proposal last Thursday. Notice it didn't get much attention, but I'm glad we're talking about it now. Here's why the ban would actually help workers out, okay? Studies show that non-competes, which appear to directly affect roughly 20 to 45% of US workers in the private sector, hold down pay because job switching is one of the more reliable ways to secure a pay raise. Many economists believe that they believe that they help explain why pay for middle income workers has actually stagnated in recent decades. Although let's keep it real, they've also stagnated because worker unions and things like that have decreased. And so with less bargaining power, it's gonna be a lot more difficult for you to increase your wages. I wanted to make sure to mention that because it's not just about non-compete clauses. Other studies show that non-compete protect established companies from competition from startups. And so reducing that competition is a huge problem as well. It gives the consumer less options. And the arrangements may also harm productivity by making it hard for companies to hire workers who best fit their needs. So I think the FTC is making the right proposal here. John, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I liked, I don't know if it was last week or whatever, they had that judgment against I think four companies for the non-competes that they had had. That was a good sign. This is obviously gonna affect pharma workers if they get it done. Uh, yeah, it's a reminder. I'm glad that you mentioned the unions. It's a reminder that labor rights is a complex thing that involves a lot of different, uh, a lot of different issues. It's not just pay. It's not just benefits. It's these sorts of things too. Arbitration, all of this, and it's a reminder that uh, the the path to progress. In some cases, it takes individual workers organizing their own workplace. In some cases, it takes hopefully getting the right people in positions of power to appoint people to organizations like the FTC and hope that that will point them in the right direction and pay dividends over time. Exactly, now I'll give you some evidence to why this is such a great idea, the proposal I mean. So according to a 2019 study from the Economic Policy Institute, they do great work. More than a quarter, 29% of responding establishments where the average wage was less than $13, can't even freaking believe this, use non-competes for their workers. Yeah, it's just a, it's just their way of controlling wages. They yeah. found a roundabout way to do it. Here's an insane example from a complaint that the FTC filed last week against Prudential. The two affiliated Michigan based companies and their owners, Greg Wire and Matthew Keywell, exploited their superior bargaining power against low wage security guards, requiring them to sign contracts containing restrictions, get this, that prohibited them from working for a competing business within a 100 mile radius of their job site with Prudential for two years after leaving Prudential. Had they been trained in like proprietary martial no, arts techniques course. or something? No, of course not. Yeah, no, this is this is just BS. As you said, it's it's one way of sort of secondhand controlling wage growth, but it's also to lock down workers. Yep. You don't want them transitioning. That's and when I try to think about like turnover, right? Because turnover, look. Well, they're certainly one, complaining a lot about it recently. Yeah, exactly. It's one way so to control it. If you're a worker and you feel like, okay, I don't like these working conditions. I feel like I'm being taken advantage of. I want to move to a different company. And like, let's say you're a security guard. That's what you do. That's what you're good at. Based on what Prudential did here, you can't go be a security guard within a 100 mile radius. So it prevents an unhappy employee from mm-hmm. leaving. Yeah, for, for years, like I think about 
how this could have, like I, I was a waiter like through college and through grad school. Imagine if there had been non-competes on you can't take a different waiting job or something. Insane. Yeah, I guess they just didn't think of it because they could do something like that. No, it's it's just it's inherently anti-worker. There are some cases where it makes sense in tech companies, some sort of security, maybe. But the vast majority of workers, it makes no sense whatsoever, except from the point of view of the owners. And by the way, there are fines that come along with violating the non-compete clauses. So in the case of Prudential, it required employees to pay $100,000 as a penalty for any alleged violation of the clause, the FTC noted. So look, I, I like that there's some positive movement happening in the country when it comes to labor rights, whether it's workers organizing their workplace, I think the Biden administration's National Labor Relations Board has been pretty good, especially relative to previous administrations. And now we're hearing some good news from the Federal Trade Commission. Great. So this doesn't just happen out of nowhere. It happens when workers really start to take their power back. Let's keep that going. It's good news overall. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.